Okay, guys, so I wanted to go over transformation efficiency really quickly with you guys because uh, I know that this may be on your quiz next week and I don't think we'll have time to cover it in class. So let's just do that really quickly through this video so you guys have a good grasp of what you're doing when you're calculating uh, the parameters of these equations. So uh, let's put that transformation efficiency at the top here. Now, uh, do remember that transformation efficiency actually has a very strict definition. It's actually the number of transformants or transform colonies, transform colonies, each of which, by the way, are from a single clone. So that would be the number of transform cells. You can think about it like that, uh, which was present on your LB plus the AMP plate. Um, and it's going to be divided by the amount of DNA, amount of DNA. So the DNA in this case would be PGLO um, that was actually spread on the plate itself and that's right, I'll be plate there. Well, I'm not going to write the plate. But anyway, this amount here is going to be the amount of DNA in micrograms. So we kind of want to focus on this microgram and see how we can calculate that through these equations. But first and foremost, uh, do remember that this number of transfer colonies right here does differ for everyone. So everyone had different results. You guys counted those colonies independently. I'm going to go with 190 uh, because I didn't do this lab, but you know that's the number that's in the manual. So let's go with that one. And while that one is from the example, I think the amount of DNA spread on the LB should be consistent for all of you guys, uh, depending on you know which protocol you follow. But the protocol that you should have followed started off with essentially this big stock solution of PGLO. And the stock solution is really important because it's going to tell you a little bit about the concentration of the amount of PGLO DNA that you have. As in, in the stock solution that you guys use, you guys had something like 0.08 micrograms per microliters um, for that solution. And you guys took 10 microliters of that solution uh, in order to transform your bacteria. Now, here's the thing. So we have 10 liters from a solution that has 0.08 microgram per microliter. Did I say liter? Microliter. 10 microliters from a 0.08 micrograms per microliter. Uh, and you can do this in your head, but if you wanted to do the proper dimensional analysis, you're essentially multiplying the concentration here. So you have 10 microliters multiplied by 0 0.08 micrograms divided by microliters. And that allows you to cancel out those microliters, leaving you with 0 0.8 micrograms of DNA in that 10 microliter PGLO solution that you guys used. Now, what do you guys do with that? Well, you put it into a test tube that had a solution already. And I believe that solution had 250 microliters of LB and 250 microliters of calcium chloride. Okay, now once you add that 10 microliters of the PGLO solution, then that's going to give you a total of 510. 510. 10 microliters of this entire solution. Now, in that 510 microliters of solution, you have 0 0.8 micrograms of DNA, right, in that 510 microliters of solution. Okay, so we're getting pretty close because now that test tube is the tube from which you guys transfer the solution to the plate. But we have to take that into account because remember, from this 510 microliter solution, you transferred 10, sorry, 100 microliters. Okay, so how much DNA is in 100 microliters? Well, in order to do that, we need to figure out the fraction of DNA that we would have transferred by first dividing 100 microliters by 500 microliters. Because that tells us from this entire solution, we transfer 100 microliters, how much DNA is in there? Well, this gives me, I think, 0 0.2 as sort of this um, a fraction or percent, 20% of the original solution, which means that if I had 0 0.8 micrograms of DNA in 500, 10 microliters, ooh, that's 510, sorry guys, 510 microliters, then now the amount of DNA that I would have is simply calculated by 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, which gives me 0 0.16 micrograms of DNA in that 100 microliter solution that we spread onto the plate. So that's it right there, 0 0.16 micrograms. So I can take this value and 
essentially divide 190 for me, that's the number of colonies that I had, and put 0 0.16 micrograms there. And this should give me something like 1187 transformants per microgram of DNA that was spread on the plate. So alternatively, I can turn that into 1.187 times 10 to the power of three transformants per microgram of DNA. And that is how you calculate your transformation efficiency.